Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 18, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. And this is a special time. Even though we do begin the week with an energy that feels nebulous, and for some of us, maybe even disappointing, it soon gives way to a healthy sense of possibility rooted in healthy self-respect. Along the way, we learn how it is that we want to give voice to and actually speak of whatever it is that we're feeling as part of empowering ourselves, remembering whom it is that we are and the things within ourselves that we like, that we know are worthy. That's a big thing this week as well as we begin larger lessons that are going to be with us throughout the summer. So let's take it one at a time right out of the gate as we begin the week. Well, really is all about the sun speaking in a conversation of tension with Neptune. Whenever it is that the sun squares Neptune, well, it represents one of these moments that can feel in a sense as if we know and we're so certain, but at the same time, having some doubt maybe even our own fears kick up. Now, the thing is, sometimes we don't know if it is that what is being presented to us is very clear, is very straightforward. Sometimes people don't intend to lead us in different directions than the truth, but sometimes they do, unfortunately. And that's the kind of energy we have here. On the one hand, over-promising, but also gossipy as well, where we don't know what's real. It is the sun that is in the later degrees or the later part of the sign of Gemini. Gemini is an energy of information, of exchanging facts. So you can see here with Neptune having to do with what is magical and mystical and uncertain. Well, you can see how when these two planets are not speaking in harmony, when there is a connection here of tension, well, it tends to suggest that our words, our thoughts get carried away, get the better of us. Our own imagination may not necessarily be well rooted and our own sense of what we're believing and what we're not believing. Well, it can all be kind of topsy turvy right about now, but ultimately this might just represent a moment. The moment will come, but it will also go. And through it all, we may learn about ourselves a whole lot, making it valuable nonetheless. But it does become important to consider whatever it is that we're talking about as a collective and whatever it is we may be talking about in our own more personal sphere, to be patient with ourselves and with others, to take it with a little bit of a step back and to not take anything personally, especially not right now. We just don't know what's true. And we also don't know necessarily what other people are understanding with the best of intentions. Other people with this energy may have a sense that their most hopeful, fantastical aspirations are what you are promising, but it's vice versa as well. You may be seeing someone as the key, as the ticket to fulfilling some hope, some potential, some promise, and yet they may not have the skill or ability to do that. And so pace yourself and be yourself, as I like to say. Ultimately, this might just represent a moment, a moment that can come and go rather quickly. Now, the very hopeful energy is what happens on Monday. And that is an important peak moment of the larger Jupiter in Taurus transit, but also Saturn in Pisces transit as well. These two planets are going to speak in harmony. I love this energy. It represents a key characteristic of not just Jupiter and Taurus, but as I said, Saturn and Pisces as well. These are big planets in early stages of big cycles. It is Jupiter that is a month into a one-year transit through Taurus. It is Saturn that just back in March, not long ago at all, moved into the sign of Pisces for a three-year stay. So you can see here, these two planets are kind of newly stepping into a brand new energy. On the one hand, inviting us to cultivate self-respect, 
take ownership for our happiness and what it is we've manifested on the one hand with Saturn in at least one area of life and with Jupiter. It's all about possibility, potential, expansion, hope, and what it is that we believe in our most optimistic, adventurous sense could be possible for us. When these two planets speak in this way, it's about making a plan. You can have a dream. That's a wonderful thing. You can make the plan, but then it becomes about taking action and also knowing that you're going to do your part to the best of your ability. You will do what you can do. And then there comes a moment when you have to trust it's going to count for something in the fullness of time. You have to trust that the universe in one way or another will respond and whatever the response is, is ultimately part of a higher, more loving vision for you as part of your individual journey, but of course, for the collective as well. Now, for the collective, remember, Jupiter in the sign of Taurus is bringing this healing energy where it comes to matters having to do with the economy, for example, how we understand prosperity and money. But it's also connected to an understanding of our connection to the earth and how it is that we embody the energies of the earth. Well, it is Saturn, especially in the sign of Pisces, that invites us to move beyond the hope, beyond the dream, beyond what it is we wish was, and actually make it real. And to make it real and manifest it on the earth in this time, well, that's part of the invitation of this energy. It's important to pay attention to this time for another reason. Ultimately, this harmonious connection will come and go, in some cases rather quickly. However, it is going to be Jupiter sextile Saturn that is going to be a more free-floating energy once we end the year and start a brand new year. This energy is going to be hanging around for about two months' time as both of these planets slow down, stand still, slowly start to move forward, all within orb of a harmonious alignment to each other. And so it will be at that time that we'll really be able to maximize the opportunity that right now may feel like it comes and goes. Venus stepping into shadow on Tuesday is the beginning of a larger retrograde journey. As Venus starts to walk a path that she will eventually walk over again once she is retrograde and for a third and final time when she is direct after the retrograde. And so right now, Venus may appear strong in the sky, but the pathway that she's walking this week is exactly where she will return once we get into the first days of September. And so this is the first pass that begins now. The 23rd of July, Venus will officially go retrograde, start walking backward on the same path, and it is going to be at the beginning of September as Venus stations stand still in the sky, closer to the earth than she might otherwise be at the height of her power, that she is going to be right here where she is this week. And at that time, she's going to go direct. And it may not be until September that we may see what transpires now differently in some way, more clearly, with a greater sense of heart, and a greater sense of love, but not just romantic love, certainly, but also love and compassion for ourselves as well. Venus retrograde season tends to very famously be a time when uh, exes pop up from the past, right? And we start becoming nostalgic as well, or maybe we don't see the past that was in love accurately in some way. So much so that we might just give it another chance where it didn't work out before. Now, sometimes in giving it another chance, we get a chance to see why it didn't work and really appreciate it that much more deeply. But at other times, of course, there's that promise and potential, that hope that we all have that maybe this time it'll work. Here's the thing. It is Venus that is in the sign of Leo. Leo is an energy that is loyal. And what that means is it becomes that much more likely that we are going to be interested in the connections we already had in the past. Another layer of understanding to this energy of Leo is, well, Leo rules the heart, and the heart is all your own. It is your own experience. It is the center of the individual. 
And so it's not just about romantic love, but how it is that whatever's happened in romantic love, perhaps at some point in the past, possibly represented where you were in terms of self-love at that time. And where is it now that perhaps your heart has grown more magnanimous, more caring of you? And where is it now that you, as you are and who you are today, might make different choices than you did back then? That journey of understanding one's own heart, the power of the depth of love that we can feel, that we can share, is going to feel especially strong now. There are going to be some big celestial moments as part of this larger transit. And I'll talk about them every step of the way. And again, uh, in retrograde special horoscopes, like I always do when we have important new transits set to take place. Suffice it to say, this Venus retrograde is going to be a doozy. How much of a doozy? We'll start to glimpse that as soon as we step into July, which is next week. Yeah, that's where we are. Literally right around the corner is when Venus goes into high gear in important ways. And it will likely be at that time that we'll start to glimpse that this is no ordinary Venus retrograde season. It's one with shocks and twists and turns and uncertainties and disappointments. And finally, finally looking at the truth, perhaps the truth that we didn't want to acknowledge before. That truth could be about ourselves. That truth may be related to another, but ultimately the truth and the core of the truth comes down to the love you feel for you. And where is it that you lived from that place of authentically showing care and love and kindness towards yourself and where you didn't? How did that show up romantically or not? Well, all of us are going to be surprised by what we come to realize over the course of this larger transit. So again, be on the lookout. There are going to be uh, videos that I present, of course, as always, as I have been since 2008. Yes, going all the way back. And I've loved every minute of it. But yes, this is very special energy. And it is now that we start to appreciate what it means to tap into it. Your heart, our hearts, collectively and individually, are powerful, truly and when it is that we turn some of that power around to sit in an authentic sense of self-love, not an ego-driven love, not a self-love that needs to be better than anybody else, that needs to be more than anybody else, but a self-love that acknowledges if you deserve love, maybe there's something inside all of us that deserves love. Well, it's from that place that true love can begin. On Wednesday, the sun will move into the sign of cancer. Happy birthday to all the cancers out there in the Northern Hemisphere. It is the time of the most light. Uh, it is a time when the daylight is longest and brightest. And that is a powerful symbolism for how it is that our own consciousness is illuminated. We're invited to bring light, to bring insight into things about ourselves that sometimes become obscured or that we might hide even from ourselves. This is a time of heightened emotion, yes, but there's a, a truth in that emotion, a rationality within our feelings. And that is the rationality of truth. The truth of what we feel is something to embrace because it points the way to an understanding of what we are really wanting and whether or not we have it. Now, what's interesting is just literal moments before the sun changes signs, it is going to be the sun at the very end of the sign of Gemini that's going to reach out and connect in a quincunx conversation with Pluto. This brings with it a flurry of intensity very quickly, but it also dissipates very quickly as well. It can find resolution quickly. It is the energy of Pluto that feels like it brings on a lot of emotion, but also the opportunity to focus. Sometimes we can't help but focus. We're so overcome with what it is that is in front of us or what it is that we're feeling. But again, there's something honest about Pluto. and There's something honest about what it is we're perceiving and thinking now. 
it is ultimately as soon as the sun changes signs that the intensity of that more Plutonian energy starts to calm, starts to dissipate. And instead, we start to move into a space of honoring and accepting our true feelings around a matter, even if it's hard. Up until this point, with the sun in Gemini, it's been a lot about what we're thinking and going back and forth in our own minds. We get to the sun in Cancer and it becomes about what we are feeling, what our emotions are telling us, what wisdom lies there. We can trust that. Well, chances are what we come to realize illuminates, yes, but it, it brings us back to our center. It lightens our load, helps us to let go of some baggage that we don't need to carry anymore. That is the gift of solar energy, reminding us who we are at our core and who we are when we're being true to ourselves, all of ourselves, emotion, mind, body, and spirit. And finally, also on Wednesday, we have a harmonious connection between Mercury and Mars. I love this energy for you. This is such a beautiful energy. Uh, it is this energy that is taking that Gemini Mercury strongly placed and bringing passion to words, uh, bringing heart because it is Mars in the sign of Leo to our thoughts. Now, interestingly, it is sort of simultaneously that Chiron is trine Mars, is sextile Mercury. And that to me says that whatever it is that we're talking about, thinking, uh, wherever it is that we are feeling like finally we're thinking in a way that is empowered with an eye towards how we can empower ourselves, that is the pathway to healing as well. And where it is that we are speaking in the moment, speaking our truth, but speaking from a heart-centered place, well, that could end up being powerfully healing to ourselves and to others that we know in our sphere and also perhaps whom it is that we talk to as well. Now, ultimately, we're not responsible for anyone else's healing. People make their own choices based on where they are in their growth and what they're ready for. However, something very powerful happens when we focus on being the best that we can be, elevating the energy, coming from a place of healing, consciousness, and wanting to be our very best, it opens up a pathway that makes that possible for other people as well. Without us needing to ask anything of them or saying a word, they themselves may naturally be drawn to a part of them that also knows they deserve to elevate, move towards healing as well. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a powerful and meaningful astrological moment. Well, I think Jupiter sextile Saturn is the star of the show now. It is a very big deal. And it is this energy that is set to be downright inspiring and grounding as well. It is Jupiter that is in Earth sign Taurus, an energy that invites us to be truly present for our lives and present for ourselves, to find power in this moment as it is right now. And it is Saturn that encourages us to accept reality in a way that fuels healthy self-respect in the process. You can dream, absolutely, it's a part of being a human being. We dream, we hope, we wish, we're reaching for better, for more. But if we can do that from a place of acceptance of this moment, seeking the perfection of this moment, well, it makes us that much more powerful and effective as well to live all those things we dream to be. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to synchronicity, university events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below.
YouTube for astrologers, also known as spiritual entrepreneurship, is back at the one and only Kepler College, the world-renowned institute. Now, as we begin this week, there are just a few days left to get the reduced rate uh, with Kepler College. Now, they are the ones who handle all of that. Class sizes are very small and classes always fill up. It always uh, sells out. And thank you for your trust and for your love and for seeing something in me that inspires you enough to sign up for this journey that we will take together. And this is ultimately a journey that is about understanding how to approach entrepreneurship, social media, engagement, posting, creation, from a place of understanding that this is a tool for your spiritual growth and your spiritual empowerment. But we get really practical here. We look at all sides of creating prosperity. Yes, inner prosperity, but practical steps as well. You get to see sort of behind the scenes of what it is that I do uh, and all the different ways in which what I have been able to do, thanks to friends and fans out there, how it comes together, how I make it happen. Uh, everything from the technical side of creating videos and creating social media content to the very practical side of running your own entrepreneurial endeavor. There is so much that we cover here. And so I hope that you'll check it out. You can learn a lot more right on the Kepler College website. Uh, remember, a big part of this class is mentorship. And so we have a small class size we learn together, we create a sacred and safe space for all of us. And in the process, there is a uh, online platform where students post and can post every day. There are suggested assignments that you can do every week or more. And as much as you ask, as much as you share, is as much mentorship you get back from me and the support and love of others in that setting as well. So I hope you'll join us. You don't have to be an astrologer for this at all. Uh, in fact, astrology is just one small part of the first class. Other than that, regardless of what type of spiritual practice you have, or if your entrepreneurial endeavors aren't necessarily about spirituality, but still you're a spiritual person, you will get a lot out of this class. And so I hope that you'll join us, keplercollege.org. The link to learn more and to take advantage of the reduced early bird rate that finishes very soon at some point this week. Well, all of that is available in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible programs starting this July right around the corner. You've got about two weeks left as we start this week to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from these incredible astrologers. I'm so excited about this program. Well, I'm going to start with the one and only Christopher Renstrom. He is a big dog astrologer. What a privilege to have him at Synchronicity University. And he is going to be teaching you how he reads a chart. And he'll be diving in deeply, helping you to understand the sun, the rising, and so much more. This class will make you a better astrologer. I can say that very confidently. And it is Christopher who really is one of the top astrologers in the world right now with several best-selling books. Uh, I love him as a writer. He reaches far and wide with his work. He writes horoscopes as well in addition to books. And so he is somebody to check out. And I know a lot of you already know him because he is such a superstar. Well, now you get to learn from him for as low as just $5 a glass. Yes, you've got less than two weeks left to choose your tuition rate to learn from the one and only Christopher Renstrom. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents Taylor Schuler, award-winning astrologer, and her class is all about finding your life purpose in the astrology chart. Wow, this class is proving to be very popular. Lots of people signing up, and I'm so very pleased. If you've seen my interviews with Taylor before, you know she is ready. She is an amazing speaker and teacher. She's taught at Synchronicity University before as part of the speaker series and had one of our most highly rated 
classes based on student survey feedback after the class was over. And so I hope that you will join us for the incredible Taylor Schuler. Again, this is all about life purpose, diving in, understanding the different ways in which you can start to tap into life purpose in your own chart, but also guide others as well. And you've got less than two weeks left to choose your tuition rate, as low as just $5 a class to learn from the one and only Taylor Schuler at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents an incredible July 2023 speaker series. You've got less than two weeks left to choose your tuition rate, as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate for this caliber of astrologer. Check out these superstar astrologers we have coming up with the speaker series. We have got Christine Skinner, one of our living legends. I'm so grateful that she's coming back. She is a world leader in financial astrology, and she is going to be teaching on astro money management. This is going to be a wonderful course based on one of her many best-selling books. She is such an accomplished astrologer and really uh, is a shining star in financial astrology. So I hope that you will check out her class. Another lovely big dog person is Becca Tarnas. I love that she's coming to Synchronicity University, and she's going to be teaching you how to use an ephemeris, like if you don't have a computer around, which I know all of us do, but something that astrologers used to do before everybody had a computer in their phone, in their pocket, was they used an ephemeris. She's going to help you to tap into that ephemeris to calculate transits so that you understand your relationship to the sky in a way that's so tactile, so immediate. I know a lot of people are going to love this class. Pamela Quinn, a star online, is going to be teaching about Saturn in astrology, honoring Saturn so that you can make the most of this energy. Celeste Brooks is going to be teaching on eclipses in astrology, a very powerful predictive technique, tapping into an understanding of how eclipses might show up for you in your life and how it is that you can make connections between eclipses happening now in your own chart as well as part of forecasting. And Janae Jones is going to teach on the Yod aspect. This is a larger configuration that fascinates so many students of astrology. She is going to be tapping into this. The Yod aspect is also called the finger of God. It involves two planets, sextile, and both planets quincunx a single planet. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't you worry. Janae is going to explain that all to you during her class. And so once again, you have less than two weeks left to choose your tuition rate, as low as just $5 a class, to learn from these incredible powerhouse astrologers only at synchronicityuniversity.com. This July 2023 speaker series. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. I'm truly so grateful for it. Remember, there's just a few days left as we start this week to take advantage of Kepler College's early rate, early registration rate. Uh, the class that I teach only once a year, the only business class I teach is with Kepler College and it always sells out. Uh, there always ends up being a waiting list. And so I hope that you will consider learning more about that class, joining us. Feel free to reach out either through my website, nadiashaw.com or directly through Kepler with any questions that you may have. I know Kepler is there to answer questions, but of course you can reach out to me as well. If you have any questions about joining us at Kepler College, I love being a part of their faculty. I hope that you'll join us there. But thank you for just all of it, your time, your trust, your love. I'm so grateful. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.